this film that you have, that you're putting out there into the world is about a, a very infamous story, um, The Boston Strangler, but the angle it's taking is so unique in the sense that it seems like it's women having women's backs. Yes, I think um, it is extraordinary. Firstly, that the we all know the story of the Boston Strangler, and these women were completely erased from the narrative, which is shocking. That was the most yeah. shocking part of the story. Yeah. The they, women they, who helped unveil mm -hmm. the, the connections, the connections, and the warnings, yes. and yeah. what we what people were supposed to be looking out mm -hmm. for because everyone was terrified. Yeah. And they warned the women of Boston that something was amiss because none of the men in the establishment were paying attention to these killings because the women's lives weren't valued. In fact, we have a clip, actually. Let me throw you to that. It's stunning film, too. It's so beautiful. Someone came to the house? They put it in the mail slot. It's just me and the kids home. You think it was a deranged cop or some deranged... I'm not exactly pleased about it either way. McLaughlin and Jean Cole, these real life journalists who, as you say, were sort of put in the backseat, erased, um, even though they were the ones who I think were raising, you know, the biggest raising flag. The name, but they also coined the name, mm -hmm. the Boston Strangler. So they were the two that named it. They were the two that linked the killings, you know, and, and actually in the story of the Boston Strangler, they've been completely taken out. Kira, you know, I heard a story about you that you yourself, you know, had a moment where you had to really deal with, as a woman, things coming at you in a way that was really difficult to handle and navigate. Yeah. Will you share that? Yeah, I mean, I think in my early 20s, I became very famous. And that was a lot to take on. I think it's a lot to take on when you're a teen, a kid, mm -hmm. who doesn't really, isn't really aware of what you look like and isn't really aware, I was very tomboyish, you know, and I'm playing these roles that are not tomboyish. They're, they're gorgeous, they're the lusted after kind of creatures in the films. But what you do, and you know that that's make-believe, but actually you're put in a public sphere where suddenly that's what's being projected onto you. So yeah, I had, I, I had a breakdown at about 22, so I got a PTSD, I was, I was diagnosed with PTSD. You know, so it's just being a woman in the public sphere, how, how do we do that? How are we meant to, you know, navigate that space where, where there's not naturally space for us and we have to fight for it? And you, so you watch this film and you watch this struggle that they have, they're working mothers, mm -hmm. to try and be these amazing journalists, but also to raise a family and also to have a, a, a great relationship. And you know, something, the ball gets dropped somewhere. And I think, so me reading the script, and I think for a lot of women who've seen this film, they found it a very cathartic experience. Mm -hmm. um, and so kind of to, to be able to have a story where you can explore that as well is a very cathartic experience. With a scene partner it is. in the same circumstance. <laughs> yeah. Because we were yeah. both, you know, finding ourselves working mothers of two young children, That's playing right. working mothers of children. That's yeah. right. Trying to balance, you know, all, all those roles. Yeah, and, and we kept challenging. Trying, we were like, like, how are you today? Yeah. Tired. Yeah, yeah, tired. Who's doing this well? Nobody. Nobody. No. It's lovely to have an ally. When you go to work and yeah. you're like, so I had a great one where in the, I normally, pre-children, would have done so much research mm -hmm. and I would have learned to touch type yeah. because touch typing is important if you're playing a journalist at that era. And I'm suddenly doing the scenes where I'm meant to be typing. I'm like, I have no idea how to, I can't touch type. I look at her, I'm like, I can't, I can't touch type. And she was like, of course you can't. You have two children. <laughs> Pretend. I was yeah, like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we need. Yes. yes. Now yes. these two women that you're portraying are real life. So what is one thing, Carrie, that like, because if they've been forgotten and thanks mm. to you guys and this film, they are absolutely the opposite. They are being brought out into light yeah. and appreciated for their work. What is one thing about, you know, the real life hero that you portray that we should know? Well, what I love about Jean's story is she was headed for nursing school. She needed one more chemistry credit, and she was working at a Pinkham's drugstore. And a young girl, Frances McGrath, disappeared from the town. And so all the, all the journalists were at the Pinkham's using the public telephone. And she joked with Bob Court, hey, you got a job for me? And he called her in that fall um, when she would have been going, you know, to nursing school. And she, had, uh, uh, she, she got a job as a copy boy. And so she never had an education in journalism. She worked her way up at, to become a, an award-winning investigative journalist. And so I just love the story of her, you know, making her way in that male-dominated sphere from the bottom up. There was one point she was making $30 a week and childcare was $25 a week. And, she, and all the men in the office went in the office with her to advocate for a raise. Oh. And it just goes the importance of having allies, not right. just women, which of course we need, but we need the men too. And Kira, for your amazing woman, yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, 
Well, I think L Loretta McLaughlin, um, she became an award-winning uh, medical journalist and she was one of the people at the forefront of covering the AIDS crisis in Boston. Yes, well, thanks to you guys, we now have that historical evidence right out here in the present day because you can go see the Boston Strangler, which you can watch today. It premieres on Hulu. I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for coming here today.